Welcome to the special broadcast. Just a couple of hours ago, Supreme Court dealt a body blow to the auto sector, or at least the bulk of the auto sector, by ruling that come April 1st, 2017, no automaker will be allowed to sell the more polluting BS3 vehicles, irrespective of whether it's a two-wheeler, car, truck, or a bus. The industry is clearly alarmed since they are sitting on a lot of inventory and feel it could actually lead up to losses worth 20,000 to 30,000 crore rupees. To discuss that landmark verdict, we're now joined by Sunita Narayan, director for the Center for Science and Environment, somebody who's really led this crusade and this fight. Vikram Kirloskar, vice chairman of Toyota Kirloskar Motors, also is with us, joining us live from Bangalore. Uh, Siam president Vinod Dasari too is here with us. Rajiv Bajaj and Harish Salve too will be with us in moments from now. Vinod Dasari, let me give you the first word, sir. You know, how does one respond to this? Because uh, the fact is, just about December 2015, we had another adverse uh, you know, judgment from the Supreme Court at that point, banning sale of diesel vehicles above 2,000 cc. Close on the heels of that, now you have, you, know, you, have a, you, know, you have a judgment like this, which I dare say many CEOs that we were in touch with were not expecting. Your thoughts, sir? Well, uh, Ranajai, thank you very much. Uh, I think, uh, first and foremost, we all have to respect uh, whatever the Honorable Supreme Court has uh, given us verdict. There is no question about not following that. So, with that, let me say that uh, I find it rather odd. There is a law that has been stated very clearly by the government saying that you can manufacture up to March 31st and you can sell after that. Uh, this is the law. This has been the past precedence. This is what everybody has been following. Uh, and it is inappropriate to say that uh, everybody knew about it. Let me clarify. Commercial vehicle makers and all the automakers in this country have been making BS4 vehicles since 2010. So if there was so much interest in improving the uh, pollution, first and foremost, why was it not said that uh, we should be pushing the petroleum companies to be make, uh, providing fuel available from 2010? For seven years, we have been making BS3 vehicles because of lack of fuel. And suddenly, one month before or two days before, to be exact, uh, before the deadline comes, so a verdict like this comes. Now, we have no choice but to honor it. But I find it uh, quite frustrating that a law has been made, you follow the law, and suddenly something goes wrong like this. The second thing I'd like to say, Rono Joy, is we have hundreds and thousands of vehicles which are BS1 and BS2. I have been saying yeah. again and again, and Siam has been saying, if you want to reduce pollution, please reduce polluting vehicles. Why is there no ban on old vehicles? And instead, those vehicles which we have been producing for the last seven years, because of lack of fuel, suddenly two days before we get a judgment like this. So it's, it will cause some utter chaos yeah. in the auto Absolutely. industry for some time, for the mm -hmm. next uh, few weeks or so. Ashok Leyland per se, I mean, now I speak from Ashok Leyland perspective, we have very little impact because we don't have very un, uh, much unsold inventory and whatever is left over, we will sell it off in export. We have no impact, but I am sure right. it will cause a lot of confusion for the dealers, for the uh, finance companies who have sold the vehicles and so on. Right. Mm. Well, strong words there, Mr. Dasari. In fact, we will come to what options does the auto industry have at this point? Will you regroup? Will you perhaps look at even the possibility of, of moving a curative petition? We'll come to that in just a bit. Uh, but uh, Sunita Narayan, uh, you know, you and I spoke briefly yesterday outside the court and there also, you know, uh, you know, the sense was that perhaps, you know, this time round, you know, the, you know, the court may take the auto industry's concerns on board, especially because the government had also come out strongly backing. You know, on that, on that limited point, were you also pleasantly surprised by the unambiguous verdict that the Supreme Court has passed this afternoon? You know, it's not about surprise. I think I'm certainly very happy that the court has weighed in on behalf of public health. And I'm really surprised Mr. Dasri continues to take this position. Because the fact is, on Anjoy, six months ago, EPCA had discussed this matter with Siam and in a meeting where Mr. Dasri was also present. And we have been emphasizing that unlike the other transitions that has happened between BS1, BS2, and BS3, BS4 has been spread over seven years. 
Car companies are more than ready with products which are compliant with BS4, and therefore all our request was ramp down your production of BS3, ramp up your production of BS4. It is really amazing to me that the auto companies are now running to government, and yes, absolutely, I'm equally, I was very, very hurt yesterday and shocked. And frankly, something that should should make us all sit up, that the government seems to be the last refuge of the automobile companies, and the government will go out and bat for them in a way that it was personal abuse against EPCA, personal abuse against uh, somebody like me, uh, just for defending the right to clean air. And all the court has said, and I think has, has reiterated is, given the level of pollution in our cities, Automobile companies will have to walk the extra mile. That's what we were saying. Nobody refuted the fact that the last date of manufacture was 31st of March. But the fact is, given the state of extreme pollution in the country, given the fact that clean fuel was now available across the country at tremendous cost, we could definitely make sure that only clean vehicles are right. registered. And I just want to add this, that the enough. fact that is, we understand the older vehicles. Ron on Joy, just give me a minute to finish my point. We understand the point about older vehicles, but the fact is, you would have put into the, on the road. Absolutely. Fair enough. And we let Mr. Vinod Dasri also respond to the point that you made of, of the un unsold inventory. But Rajiv Bajaj also joins in. Good to have you with us, Mr. Bajaj. You know, at the end of the day, the overall inventory size, the unsold inventory for BS3 vehicles across all categories is a little over 800,000 units, at least according to the information that has been provided in the court. Many would argue that this will only have an incremental uh, sort of an impact as far as decreasing, you know, the air pollution goes. But the industry claims that the losses could be to the tune of up to 30,000 crore rupees. So in that sense, would you, you know, would you, would you perhaps say that it's, you know, it's a little harsh on the auto industry, which is already so, you know, so regulated, which pretty much complies with all the regulations? No, Ron, I would uh, absolutely not. See, there are some things that you cannot put a price on. You know, we can't forever get intimidated by 30,000 crores and 300,000 crores and this kind of stuff. This is about the air we all breathe, including our children and their children to come. I refuse to, you know, um, kind of uh, sit on a fence uh, on this. And my point is very clear. It, what did Mrs. Thatcher say years ago? She said we will stand on principle or we will not stand at all. So this is a matter of principle. Just because it is 1,000 crores, we make one decision. If it is 100,000 crores, we make another decision. This is called uncertainty. This is called unpredictable your policy. Now it is very, very predictable and certain. Everybody will think twice before interpreting something. And let's, uh, you know, let me also say this. Mm -hmm. It is true that the notification mm -hmm. said uh, production and not sale. But let us also acknowledge that everything that is good and great cannot be always just written mm -hmm. down. You have to read what is unwritten and you have to hear what is unseen. Mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to make a decision even with your heart and your conscience, not right. just based on, you know, what suits you. Mm -hmm. No, fair enough, Mr. Bajaj. Vikram Kiloskar, you know, yours is an interesting company because Toyota was among the most affected manufacturers when in December 2015 the ruling came that diesel engines above 2000 cc cannot ply, you know, on uh, on Delhi NCR roads. This time around, you took a slightly different position. I would say you were closer to Bajaj Auto and, and sort of EPCS position, you know, than rest of the Siam. But... You know, did somewhere, did Siam perhaps misread the mood of the nation as well? I mean, you were a president prior to Mr. You know, Mr. Uh, uh, Vinod Dasari. Could Siam have dealt with this, you know, in a different way? Could you have not convened a meeting and, you know, sort of, you know, seen the writing on the wall, so to speak? Well, I believe we've had many meetings in Siam regarding this issue and it was discussed fully. Some companies have taken different stance. Our stance as Toyota Kirloska Motor was that we have to change over from BS3 to BS4 as fast as possible, and we did that last year. We have no inventory left of uh, BS3 for, for a long time. And we are going to do the same regarding BS6 as well. Our, our present Camry and Cam Camry Hybrid is well below BS6 standards, even with the BS4 fuel. Mm -hmm. So I, as a company, we have taken a stand that in the long term, we go with global safety standards and global emission standards. That's the only way to go. And, uh, you know, then you will beat any of these policy uncertainties.
Right. Vinod Dasri, uh, you know, do you, uh, you know, was there perhaps need also for the industry to come together and, you know, self-regulate itself? You know, you know, try and sense the mood because especially when, you know, when in December 2015 the Supreme Court made its sort of intentions very clear that it was willing to fight this menace of pollution, could the industry have done more? That's my first question. And secondly, is there, are there any options now on the table in terms of, you know, moving perhaps a curative petition? How will the industry now respond to this? Well, since you asked that question, let me first say the, how the industry responded. Uh, let me say this on behalf of the industry. There is no country in the world where the auto industry has accepted proactively that they will go from BS4 to BS6 in three years. Europe and America have taken 10 to 12 years. So let's not put the industry to say that industry is not accepting the wrong norms. Indian auto industry has accepted safety and emission norms faster than any other country in the world. Let, that's a fact. Second thing I'd like to respond, I fully agree with uh, what Rajiv is saying that we should all stand on principles. Absolutely agree with it. But let us also talk about, in his industry it doesn't affect, but in a commercial vehicle industry, and I tried to explain this to Mr. Ms. Nara, Sunita Narayan also, that if you take, if I, I couldn't, I have been making BS4 vehicles since 2010. My customers will not buy BS4 vehicles because BS4 fuel is not available across the nation. If you take a BS4 vehicle and you put BS3 fuel in it, the system will clog. This is a technical requirement no matter which type of vehicle you use. So this is not something that we were not willing to do. All the vehicles that I was selling in the major cities and Tata was selling or Mahindra was selling in the major cities were selling BS4. Where fuel was available and the right. customers uh, had access to fuel, we were selling. It is only those places mm -hmm. where the fuel was not available, not by intent, but because mm -hmm. fuel was not mm -hmm. available. Let's just be very clear on that. Sunita part. Narayan, absolutely. Sunita Narayan, you know, this point Sanandar, has come up, I, you know, in you several know, discussions uh, on terms yeah. of migration. Yes, ma'am, uh, please respond yeah. to that. I mean, as EPCA, did yeah. you also reach out to the oil marketing, oil marketing companies to address this issue that uh, Vinod is raising? See, firstly, oil marketing companies had already made BS4 available for the past three months, simply because, as Mr. Dasri knows, you don't switch on the tap one day. The fact is, they had cleaned their pipelines. BS4 was available across the country, more or less from January onwards. But the second point that we made to Mr. Dasri is, we understand. But the fact is, then they could have taken advance orders and said that they would deliver them post um, April. The fact is, we wanted to ask them, we have asked them consistently, show us your orders, show us your inventories, but they have never complied. So, let's be very clear, Donanja, I don't want to get into this Tutu Meme right now. I think we are beyond it. Vinod, you just want to quickly respond to this before I Ranajo, move into uh, a break? Ranajo, I have the greatest Please. respect. I have the greatest respect for Ms. Sunita Narayan. And I don't want to respond to any personal allegations, whether against me or against Sian. That's all I'd like to say. We'll slip into a break and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll try and address some of the contentious issues that this order has thrown up. Stay tuned.